Welcome to Sports, Wheels, and Reels with Jeff Miller and Austin Horton. One show, two guys, three topics, unlimited possibilities. Presented by Mark Miller Subaru. Engage with us on social media or email us at podcast at mmsubaru.com. And now, welcome your hosts, Jeff Miller and Austin Horton. Episode 20. We are one episode away from being able to drink legally here on uh, Sports Wheels and Reels. Hi, Jeff. You have a fake ID for the show, though, right? I do. Okay. Um, I had it created by uh, Anthony Swenson up on the cell uh, <laughs> Good our, work. Our, the, the, <laughs> the guy with the underground connections. Uh, how are you, buddy? Doing well. How are you? Good. Happy birthday to your sweetheart yesterday. Yeah. You had a good day. You, you don't deserve her. I don't. It's true. Um, and she certainly doesn't deserve having to be around you. But Yeah, also true. <laughs> also, like with what you talk, said about your wife last time we were on a show together, I don't know. <laughs> I told my wife <laughs> that everyone's reaction was like, whoa, whoa. But she's whoa. a minion? And she was like, no, I, I, I want to be a minion. Okay. A little right. yellow, happy uh, person that just runs around making fart right. noises. And, no judgment. And, <laughs> okay. This is a no judgment zone here. And speaking in blubber. <laughs> on the uh, podcast. Gibberish. <laughs> All right, coming up, a lot to talk about in the world of sports. Uh, a lot of uh, pessimist, pessimistic takes from this side of the table. No, I can't <laughs> even imagine. <laughs> Breaking news. Uh, we're going basketball and football today in uh, Wheels Subaru with yet more uh, great news coming out about our products that we have from independent reviews. And uh, the worst drivers in America. Are they here? Are they here? Or are they elsewhere? We'll it's find possible. out. And, of course, in Reels, Jeff saw a movie. And there's movies coming out today that I want to talk about, too. Talk about that Let's and all uh, coming up next on Sports Wheels and Reels. I'm Spencer Cofed, and my Subaru is Extreme Adventure. Outback's really great for my livestock. It has just enough space for all my gear, but it's not crazy big of a footprint. If any of my friends were looking to buy a Subaru, I'd, I'd recommend Mark Miller Subaru. So you never feel like they're, they're hiding stuff from you. Whether it's skiing, skydiving, mountain bikes, surfing, my Subaru gets me out on my adventures. Subaru is a brand I trust, and Mark Miller Subaru is the Utah retailer that I love. All right, Jeff. Sports. sports. What should we talk about? Hey, sports fans. <laughs> uh, let's start with the coach. Let's start with the coach. The uh, I got that later in my thing, but we'll oh, go. Oh, sorry. Down. Sorry. Let's start, let's start with free agency. So, okay, we'll go the free agency. Let's start with our photo that we always start with with okay. the Jazz. Those two, those two guys. They're still, they're still on the Jazz. Now, uh, maybe something's happening while we are doing this show that we're not seeing. But it's as possible. of right now... Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert are still on the Utah Jazz. How much are you buying into all these? Uh, like when Donovan's wearing a shirt that says New York and pants that say Dreams Blossom in Time and he's posting song lyrics about setting him free. I think it's all so stupid. Okay. <laughs> and I think if, it, it's, if it's anything, it's him just trolling and having fun. That's what I would do. If I was in that situation, I would just screw with people. <laughs> right? It's so dumb with like, believing every little thing, so why not have fun with it? Okay. That's what I think it is. I uh, thought the same thing when, what's his face, Gordon Hayward's kids were wearing Boston Celtics gear. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, this is so dumb that people are tying that to that, and it turned out that's what they were doing. It's true. So I guess it could I be. I don't know. But Who it's knows? a little Tiger beat I I would take more into the fact that in the past, Four days, they've gotten rid of his best friend. They traded his other best friend, and, and they didn't hire his friend for a coach. Like, those three things, those are tea leaves. Yeah. That I think they, they might be moving on from Mr. Mitchell. Really? Like, completely moving? Like, he's being moved. The I, Miami Heat submitting a trade proposal, apparently. What I think happened is, I think it has something to do with this. Okay. So this was a crazy trade. Right? All right. So I, I don't think it's a bad trade for the Jazz. I think it was a great trade for the Jazz. If you missed a, a first-rounder back from the Nets. And the unload is $9 million a year. So and a 3 and D guy that no longer shoots enough threes and doesn't play any D. So suddenly the Jazz are, by getting rid of him and waving Wancho, they're now 11 something like that, $11, $12 million under the cap, under the luxury tax. They do still have a trade. Plus, now they have, and they got a TP a trade player inspection for like $9 million. Yeah. So they put themselves in a pretty good spot for a blockbuster trade. Okay. 
And I think, and you I, I really, Donovan. I really think the trade was set, and oh. Durant screwed it up. Oh, okay. I think they had the trade ready to go, with and Durant. I don't know with somebody. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Durant announcing. <laughs> all of a sudden, every every front office in the country is just up. Oh, pause. Yeah, which you have to. Right, you have yeah. to. And I think that's what happened. Did you see, uh, you should watch a clip of Windhurst on first take this morning. Who's that? Oh, Brian Windhurst. Windhurst. It's like a two-minute clip where he just starts talking about how everybody in the league right now is watching the Utah Jazz. And he talks about what happened when Danny Ainge first went to Boston. What is the first thing, two things he did? The big three thing. He hired Brad Stevens. Yeah. Young, first-time coach. And then he got rid of Kevin Garnett. Yeah. So I think that the league is waiting for the Jazz to make that move, and it's I think it's Mitchell. Okay, so it, I did not expect that take from you. I honestly thought that you were going to... Before I thought it was Gobert, but a- after watching what happened the last few days, I, if, I think the Johnny Bryant thing was the biggest thing. If Mitchell was staying, I think they would have hired Johnny Bryant. Well, they've certainly... If there was that, if there was truth to the narrative that Donovan Mitchell had taken a chokehold control on the Utah Jazz. Yeah, that's that's, not there anymore. (laughs) Yeah, That's done. Danny Ainge pretty much said, this is my team, not yours, Donovan, even if he does keep him. Now, when we talk about Will Hardy being the new coach, I saw some reports and was told by somebody. There's Will Hardy. 34 years old. There's Youngest coach in the NBA. Young William. And you hear how people talk about him around the league? He's a good hire. So, yeah, he's, he's kind of a no-name out of nowhere for a lot of people, but he's been around for a long time, and for many years he was on the list of All the way coaches. Popovich talks about him. Like, I mean, he's a, this is a smart guy that they hired. Uh, and, and, but there was someone told me that part of their decision to hire him is he presented real tangible ways to build around Donovan's offense and make, take it okay. from what it is to what it should be. Maybe he knows how to teach Gobert how to put the ball in the hoop. Or maybe they're moving on from Gobert. For more than dunking. Yeah. Well, a little five-foot hook shot. Well, and also you got to pass him the ball for him to <laughs> score. It wouldn't more. be a bad idea yeah. to give him the ball occasionally. So interesting. So this just got juicier for me. So that's what I think happened. I think that they had the trade done. I don't know what the trade was, by any means. That's in, that's very interesting. I don't think it's they're trying. I mean, Durant's not coming to Utah. Like that's not happening ever. Well, doesn't he? He could he could say never mind. I'm. He could say yes to or, or no to any trade. Could does he? he have a veto? I thought he did. There's only like five players in the league that actually have a I no swear trade. He clause. was one of them. Well, maybe he not. might be. I don't know. Uh, so if he, I mean, that's possible. If he were traded to the Jazz, he could say never mind. I'll play for Brooklyn. The trade if I saw, he has that. The trade I saw out there is how you got. It's how you got Kyrie to the Lakers. Okay. So if you can go Kyrie to the Lakers, Durant to Utah, <laughs> and Westbrook and Gobert to Brooklyn. Oh my gosh, Westbrook and Gobert on the same team? Yeah. Not they, happen. One of them will be murdered. And they'd buy it. They'd, do, they'd be a buyout probably in there yeah. somewhere. They will not be with each other on the Yeah, team. someone else was out there trying to talk about how they're going to trade Westbrook to Utah and they're going to buy him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not ever happening. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, All right, well, juicy, juicy. So that's uh, what I think's going on in that. But I, I don't know. I think you're gonna find. I think a lot's gonna happen the next week. I do. I, I I do not think Donovan was very happy with the coaching. First of all, that there was a coaching change coming, no. and that they didn't go with Johnny Bryant. Wasn't even a finalist. No, not even a finalist in there. So the cra- crazy thing is, they're talking with with Will Hardy coming in. That none of the assistants are gonna stay. That he's gonna bring his own staff. That is probably wise. Yeah. There was some, well, especially if they're moving on from guys like Gobert and or Mitchell, yeah. who have the ties to Alex Jensen and the previous. I'd staff. like to see Alex Jensen stay on, but I think Alex Jensen and his family would like to stay on because they've never wanted to leave Utah. No. But their kids are now a little older. Maybe they think it's yeah. a good move. All we'll right. See. So the other Jazz free agent news was nothing. announced. No, <laughs> announced by Renee Ingles herself. <laughs> Renee Eagles announces Joe's going to, I don't six and a half million dollars to for Milwaukee. a guy coming off an ACL Won't who's thirty something years. Like that's crazy. That's nuts on a one year deal. Yep. And yeah, he won't be until March. So you're paying six and a half million dollars to a guy, and they're over the luxury tax, so they're really paying like eleven or twelve. And he is on the quote unquote older end of the NBA spectrum. Why would you not just wait? It was a fast offer. 
from right? Milwaukee. Why would that? Why would the Ingles not sign that? Oh, without question, the Ingles yeah. were right on that one. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt He's you like, signed I'll sign that. that in as blood. As... <laughs> I'll make this happen. Oh my gosh, right? He's gonna. He uh, might play ten games, <laughs> fifteen games, maybe. And I guess he has a chance to win a ring. Maybe I guess like for like the playoffs and stuff, he might be a great guy to like come off the bench and hit some threes. Know. But he's, he's coming off an ACL. He's, he's coming off in an his ACL 30s. in his mid to late thirties, and he really was not any really good last year before the ACL. No, so I don't know. Uh, well, good for him though. Let's talk about some football. Let's talk some uh, football. I guess, uh, all around college and sports. A little more somber mood here. That's the tombstone. All y'all with, with your Pac-12 tattoos and flags and banners. Should've, should've and have kept your Pac-10. Should've kept your Pac-10 or Pac-8. Pac-6 uh, when all is said and done. So USC we, and UCLA going to the Big Ten in 2024. That's right. And they should. That's and a lot. Oregon should have done this before USC did this. My favorite thing is these guys before the show are saying, why would they do that? It's called money. Money. <laughs> it's the lots and lots of money. Also, uh, the, the new commissioner, a year ago today, by the way, today was yeah. when he was uh, announced as the new commissioner, voted against a, 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 a f- playoff expansion. Yeah. What? That only helps the Pac-12. And was hired without any collegiate experience whatsoever because he had TV experience. And what has happened with the TV deal with the Pac-12 since a year ago? Zip. No, nothing. Nothing. So, yeah. of course, USC, the UCLA is the basketball thing. No yeah. one cares about their football team. Uh, but so what happens to Utah? Utah better be calling BYU and saying, hey, buddy. How about the Big 12? Hey, mm-hmm. let's, get, let's get up. back. To, we didn't mean it. We didn't mean that. Oh, like, oh, getting their schedule back? Yeah. No, well, no, I mean, get bring us with you to the Big 12. Yeah, I think the they don't, BYU's they don't, got I'm, zero well, power. I'm very being very facetious here. Utah doesn't need BYU to go where they want to go. No. And BYU doesn't need you got to imagine the Big 12's calling right now and trying to expand. If the Big 12 is smart, they are calling Oregon. They're calling Washington. They're calling Utah. Mm-hmm. I guess Colorado. Maybe. If you Maybe. Colorado, though. But for regional reasons. But you have BYU in that region. Yeah. Denver. Like when you create your... It would be nice to have the Denver market. Travel partners does matter at some point. Uh, how bad is it going to be for USC having to travel to Big Ten... Oh, that's uh, that's too bad. I really, I don't like to see USC have to suffer. As at a all. as a USC alumni, I can tell you how little USC <laughs> likes playing in the snow, <laughs> and they've just signed their death warrant of playing in the snow every year. Now they, they literally have in their contract with Notre Dame, yeah, that they don't yeah. play Notre Dame after September. Yes, if because, they go to Notre Dame, that's right. So Notre Dame always comes to USC in November. Yeah. And USC always go to Notre, goes to Notre Dame in September. Yep. And it's part of their contract because they don't like the snow. Just. That's why they tried to vote against Utah coming in. Because they don't want to play in the snow. Isn't that so bad? It's very soft. Um, it's very soft. Now, here's where I, I'm telling you, Jeff, in the next 10 years at, at most, maybe five, we are headed for a haves and have nots college football landscape of 30 teams in the country who are college football, and then everyone else Another is, division. is completely below them. Doesn't have a chance to win anything. And you're going to see things like USC have satellite team headquarters back east, but they are still representing USC. Like where they'll practice in, like, your The team will be based where their Cup. conference is, but the school is still Interesting. in California. That's going to happen. So That's you got, where it's going. So you got two more years of Pac-12. Yeah. It, who cares? It's over. Yeah. Uh, the, the good thing you got to the Rose Bowl and lost to Ohio State if you're Utah. Yeah. we we'll do it again this year. And Kyle Whittingham signing that extension. Good thing he did that as yeah. soon as he could. So now he can go, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. And you still oh, yeah, a lot of things can change, though. I mean, Utah gets in the Big Twelve; it's a whole new game, right? There was, I mean, look a year ago, the Big Twelve looked completely dead. Yeah. And while they're not as good on paper as they were before, they did some good things and added some teams to make it a, at least a little more attractive today than what the Pac-12 is today. How much do you think you, uh, USC fans are going to love those nine a.m. kickoffs? Nah. Uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll, 10 a.m. kickoffs. Yeah, deal with it. Yeah. That's what I say to you. 
<laughs> How is attendance at USC football these days? Does it still sell out? I think they do a pretty good job. Do but, they? I mean, I don't think they're filling 90,000 to a regular game. But, like, I mean, I think they get 70, 80,000. Look, man, I, I am a... It's a big stadium. I'm a big, I'm a big Angels fan. And I'm going to California in August, and I considered very much to go to an Angels game. But there's just so much more things to do down there mm-hmm. that I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, you should I go don't. to a Dodger game, see a real team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I like to go to the Angels games because they have a real stadium. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Ah. All right, that's it for sports. We'll come back on the other side. We'll talk wheels. Uh, Subaru and Consumer Reports. Also, the worst drivers in America. Is it you, Utah? Probably. And our Love Promise Partner of the Week. More next on Sports Wheels and Reels. My name is Sierra Hudson. My Subaru is safety for my family. So this past winter, we hit a black ice and we just started to slide. And, and it was just one of those moments where you truly feel helpless. It's, a, it's I know it's a car, but it means so much more to us and our family. Subaru is one of the safest brands, and I've personally lived that. Subaru is a brand you can trust, and Mark Miller Subaru is the local Utah retailer that you will love. All right, it's time for Wheels here on episode 20 of Sports Wheels and Reels. You can find us anywhere you listen to your podcasts. I assume if you're listening or watching us right now, you know that. Probably. But uh, please, if you are watching and listening, get us a review uh, because that's how we get into people's faces more mm-hmm. uh, on their timelines is those algorithms. Help us help the robots help you find us. Yeah, absolutely. To put it simply. All right, uh, let's talk about Consumer, Consumer Reports. Reports. Earlier this year, Consumer Reports... Uh, ranked 32 cars based car brands based on overall scores of their models, including road tests, reliability, satisfaction, safety, and Jeff Subaru came out as the car brand that makes the best vehicles. Yeah, 81 overall, beat them by three, like not even close. Right ahead of yeah, Mazda, yeah, Mazda, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Audi, Porsche, Mini, Toyota. And- Toyota's pretty far down. Uh, then they go uh, model specific Outback, Crosscheck, Forester, Ascent, and President Legacy get the highest road test scores of any car brand. And the next closest were Audi and Porsche, one behind. Yeah, the Subaru. They love, love the Subarus. That's good uh, fodder or good ammo for those that say uh, that Subaru is not as luxurious yeah. as it could be. Uh, which I always laughed at because I've never had a more luxurious car than my Subaru. And it's funny because we, it's you listen to people talk and they're like, "How oh, do you are you worrying about recessions and everything like that and like what what's going on with the economy and if what happens if the car market dies?" It's generally a pretty good thing for Subaru. Okay. Because if you know, remember back in two thousand eight when everything went down, what happens is is that all those brands you see there that are a lot more expensive than Subaru, BMW, Lexus, Audi, Porsche, even Toyota to an extent those buyers still need to have cars. And so they generally come down in the funnel a little bit price-wise, and they come into most reliable, good gas mileage cars. Huh. And Subaru generally does very well in those moments. Yeah, well, and speaking of recession and Subaru and prices, the Impreza, the 2023 Impreza, you can still get a top-of-the-line Impreza for under 25 grand. Yeah, they, they, they really haven't been bumping their prices like the rest of the market. So good things happening for Subaru. And we are seeing a turnaround in production. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're seeing more and more cars come in. I, I just personally, I had more new cars delivered in the month of June than I have my whole time being here. Well done. Well, just that Subaru will be <laughs> making them faster. And yeah, I'm excited to see what our next allocation, we should get our next allocation numbers in the next few days on what we're going to see for August. But I'm optimistic. You can order the Outback, the Crosstrek, the Impreza, the, soon the Ascent and Legacy. The new Ascent. The new Ascent's pretty cool. The new Ascent going with the bigger screen. Yeah, the bigger screen on the front of it. And it's got the 360 cameras around it now. Yeah, that's It's really pretty cool. cool. Yeah. And they actually added the uh, smart mirrors now on the Outback. That's right. You can get the smart mirror that you could only get in the Touring Ascent. Now you can get that in the Outback. Do you know what they did with the camera? Put it in the fin. It's in the fin. That's really cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so instead not, of on the top, so it's of the not belt, in the glass. Yeah. So you don't have yeah. to worry about tinting around it or anything like that. It's in the fin. 
smart place to put it. Your antenna fin. Yeah. You, yeah. It's a shark Which, fin, as we like to call it. And it, it has, like, shark skin on it. Yeah. So that For the arrow, air flows yeah. around it. and Really cool. Probably worth 0.1 miles per gallon. <laughs> That's right. But it looks cool. <laughs> it feels cool. Someone asked me the other day on a test drive about uh, the start auto start stop and yeah. does it help on gas mileage? And I clicked through on the button and said, here's what it's done its whole life. Uh, 53 minutes and 0.6 Gallon saved. It's really more about the pollution. Yeah, it's cut kind of down, pollution thing. Hey, so it they, saved them three bucks. They kind of laughed at that, <laughs> and I said, but with prices the way they are right That's now. That's $3 you yeah. just saved over the life of the car. That's your tax <laughs> that you just cut out right there. All, All right. right, we got a video? Yeah, we have a video. Uh, the report came out. This is from Fox 13 right here in good old Salt Lake City, Utah. A lot of times people think we Utah drivers are the worst, most, most irresponsible driver on the road. A lot of times I would agree with that, but a recent study says not so fast. Let's run it. Hey there, Brian Schnee in the Fox 13 newsroom. Depending on where you're from or where you live, you probably think that your state has the absolute worst drivers in the country. Well, how does Utah fit in? According to the company Smart Asset, they put out some information that says Utah might actually be one of the safer places regarding drivers out of all 50 states. They rank them as number 10, for safe drivers behind the wheel. Here are some of the things that they were looking into. The amount of fatalities per million miles. They say that Utah is less than one fatality per 100 million miles, which ranks fifth nationally. But when it comes to DUIs, there has been a climb. Utah is now in 14th overall when it comes to DUIs per 1,000 drivers at roughly 3.9%. Of course, Utah also has a very stringent and strict BAC law compared to other states. Utah once again in the top 10 in a good way when it comes to uninsured drivers, less than many others, Utah ranks number nine. So the next time you honk at somebody, you think maybe there are a lot of poor drivers in this state, think again. So they used four metrics in that study, Jeff. Percentage of insured drivers, arrest for driving under the influence, fatalities per 100 million drive miles driven, and how often people did Google searches for traffic or speeding tickets. <laughs> okay. Now, all six years that this study has been done, the top uh, the, the, who has finished first is Massachusetts. Red flag, this, this uh, uh, group is based where? Northampton, uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> They're the most responsible drivers in America. But we're not the most irresponsible here in Utah. In fact, we're in the, the bottom 10. Well, if you took the DUI statistic out of it, what would it take us to? <laughs> we're in the top three worst drivers in America. Yeah. Uh, and take like, out the insured drivers. Yeah, I like the smell test more on this one. <laughs> the smell test? <laughs> yeah. Just look at how often we don't use our blinkers. And how many people drive 50 in the left speed lane and... Yeah. They're bad drivers. And tomorrow there will be... Cut off semi-trucks. There will be a news report from UHP saying we're still driving way too fast, yeah. and we are. And, totally. You know, my wife uh, takes my car on my days off. Mm -hmm. She goes uh, for gas purposes. And I have a, a speed limit curfew on my Starlink app. Oh, so it tells you she's speeding? Oh, it's just pinging all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> And I try so hard not to bring it up with her. Do you also put like a boundary of where she's allowed to go to? No, absolutely. When, when, when people test drive my car, I turn that on. Yeah, absolutely. But anywho, uh, some of the cool things you can do with uh, Should we get to the partner of the week? Love Promise Partner of the Week, Street Dog Crew of Utah. The reason I wanted to talk about them is we just recently ran a, a, a donation for tickets to Garth Brooks. Yep. If you brought in some, some pet food, you got a chance to win tickets to go see Garth Brooks. But I also wanted to draw attention because right now, animal shelters and animal services really need our help, Jeff. Mm -hmm. they, they are often forgotten when it comes to donations and service time, volunteer service time. And Street Dog Crew of Utah, you can find their website right there, Street Dog. Yep. Oh, street dog, uh, street dog crew dot org. Dog D A W G. You can donate. This is a screenshot from their website. You can donate as little as ten bucks. Will will feed a pet for a whole month. Yeah. And sixty thousand homeless Americans each night. Five to ten percent have a dog or a have cat. Have a dog or a cat. Isn't that crazy? And they that often keeps them from getting the shelter they need because these dogs and cats provide them with responsibility companionship, social interaction. But they don't want to give up the dog or the pet. That's they can't right. go in the shelter. I have a friend, Fred, 
who stands outside uh, the basketball arena, Vivid Smart Home, and he has a, a dog. He had a dog, and that, that Lucy that passed away, now he's got a dog. And the reason he and I struck up a friendship is because I would go talk to his dogs. Dog. I hate to admit it, but that's what drew... I didn't talk mm-hmm. to him at first. I was Tell giving the treats to the dog, and he's, that he has said having a dog has kept him alive yeah, all I these years it, of for being sure. homeless. So if you have the ability, 10 bucks, get on Street Dog and Crew. These guys go, and they go around, and they give do- pet food to... These homeless dogs. They provide spay and neuter, yep. all kinds of stuff for our homeless pretty, friends. Pretty awesome. Check it out. That's our Love Promise Partner of the Week. Coming up next, Reels. Reels. There is a, a good movie coming out, a movie for the families coming out, and Jeff saw a movie, which you don't do a lot. I've been to two movies in the last month at theaters. Was one with me? Yes. At the Top Gun Maverick? Yeah. That doesn't count, does it? It's a theater and it's a movie. I don't know why it wouldn't count. <laughs> but we did it for the show. Uh, I uh, just spit all over Donovan. Ooh, interesting. Foreshadowing? <laughs> interesting how that happened. You didn't spit on Rudy's. Notice how Rudy's on my side this time. Oh, yeah. I, yeah <laughs> See how we switched I, that up? I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't notice how Rudy's over here now. Subtle move there. Very Rudy here. subtle. All right, more next on Sports Wheels and Reels. My name's Jamie Usry, and my Subaru is Freedom. I've had so many animals over the years. One of the things that I love about Mark Miller Subaru is they're the largest animal welfare supporter in the Salt Lake Valley. You may not even realize it, but they're probably supporting a nonprofit that you love in the community. And my wife and I, our daughter Harper and our dogs, we're just so happy that we picked Mark Miller Subaru. Subaru is a brand that I trust, and Mark Miller Subaru is the local retailer that I love. Movies. Movies. It's movie time. Summer is all about movies. Uh, I love going to movies all the time, but especially in the summer, there's nothing better than on a really, really hot, stupid day. Going to a nice, cold movie theater. Chilling, literally, in a movie theater. theater. And coming out and being blinded by the sun again. It's my favorite. But you saw Jurassic World. I went and saw Jurassic World. It's rated terribly on the tomato meters. I liked it. And you liked it. I did. Tell me why. I like Jurassic Park movies. I mean, they're cheesy, but they're, they're good. I thought it was well done. Like, the, there was good dinosaur scenes. There was good action to it. It was a good story. Like, the story was good. It I liked wasn't, it. Uh, it wasn't that the dinosaurs were escaping again and you had to No, they were, like, them. at a refuge and there were locusts. And the <laughs> locusts. Killer locusts. <laughs> okay. But, that, but I liked how they brought in the old characters. Yeah, I've heard that. I, li- I really cool. like how they brought the old characters with the new characters and brought them together, and it made sense. Now, do you think they Like, it wasn't forced. It wasn't at all? I don't think it was forced how they brought the old characters in. It worked how they brought it in. It made sense. Well, and I think it was important for that to happen, because the first one was great, and everyone after that wasn't so great. The first one in this trilogy was pretty good. Mm-hmm. The second one wasn't that awesome. So, would you rank this... Third best all time in the franchise? Where would you put it? I'd say it's probably third best. Okay. I mean, the first original one's obviously the best, and then the first one in this is probably second, and then I'd probably go with this one third. Cool. Like I, I enjoyed it. How did all of your kids go? Yeah, all the kids they saw. They liked it. They liked it. They all thought it was entertaining. Like, it would was my three, almost four year old, be scared? Yes. Okay, so don't take her. It, there is some definitely some scary jump out of your. She's really into dinosaurs right now. As my ten year old said. I almost peed my pants. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, he said that about you? About one of the scenes in the movie. Or or he almost peed his pants. He almost peed his pants. (laughs) Isn't that funny? That's pretty good. All right, coming out today, Minions, Rise of Guru. We talked a lot about it last week. My wife wants to be a minion. I stand by that statement with her support. Is she the one in the with one eye or two eyes or? (laughs) Uh, She's probably Bob, the the fun happy guy right here. That's Bob. Um, I'm, gonna try to get you I'm just going to try and get you into more trouble. No, that's Kevin, and that's Stuart. That's impressive. Uh, it's not. It's dumb, but I know all That's of them. very impressive. Norbert, he's an idiot, if you've seen the first minutes. <laughs> all right. Okay, so that new, comes out today. New movie. And then this one, Rocketry, the Nambi effect. Nambi Narayanan, mm-hmm. an Indian rocket scientist who uh, first was one of the first introduced 
liquid fuel injected rocket fuel. I don't know why I'm foaming at the mouth. I know you're just, really excited. Just, I think you're mad about Donovan. I'm kind of. Well, I am kind of upset that the Jazz have done absolutely nothing to they this point. Have gotten rid of a bunch of people. Yeah, the wings. The they, one they, thing they needed. Guess who's still on the team? Let's argue. Miniature Conley. You could also argue the fact that we really didn't ever have wings. <laughs> that yes, worked <laughs> good. <laughs> Daniel House should have been on the Utah Jazz. But he's a head case. No, he isn't. Yeah, he kind mm, of is. Kind of Did you see Rudy There's Gay? There's a reason he was available in April. <laughs> Rudy Gay under contract still, tweeting out, yes, I'm still in the NBA. Thanks for asking. Wow. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, Namby effect. Back to this. Nambi Narayanan uh, in the early 90s was accused of espionage and selling secrets to Russia and Pakistan and jailed and tortured okay. for 50 days before uh, being released. The Supreme Court later exonerated him in 1998, but he had to live for those four years as a pariah, as wow. having been accused of selling secrets to Russia. And it turns out some guy just made up a story about him. And they believed they it. They ran with it. Crazy. They, they coerced a bunch of people with torture into confessions. This movie is done in uh, with his, his permission. It's about his life. And it is getting Oscar buzz. Interesting. So Rocketry, the Nambi effect, definitely one that snuck up on me. But I, I definitely want to go see it. Now. Yeah, interesting to see today. it too. Awesome. That's it for episode 20. Uh, next week, we will have a drink for our show. Next week. Oh, is that your prediction? Yeah, I think it's possible. By tomorrow. By next by next show. Over under three and a half days from now, Donovan's oh. still a member of the Utah Jazz. Over. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, that's not as fun. <laughs> it might next week it might be this. It might be both. Yeah. It might it might just be this next week. With, well, we're going to have to get new signatures. Now, what we'll too. do is I'll, I'll go get a little tank figurine. We'll put it in the front. A tank? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get a new bobblehead of the, the Frenchman. What's his name? Wembia? Wembiyama? Wembiyama. Oh, yeah. Could, how about that? How Think about we keep Wemby that Yama. and get him and make that our Twin Towers? Okay. Sure. I, am I the only one that thinks these guys are too skinny? Frankie Wembiyama, Chet Holmgren. They're like the size of my pen. In all fairness, Gobert was that skinny when he came in the league. Nah, was he that skinny? Gobert was really yeah, skinny. I guess, yeah. yeah, I got to show you some pictures of Gobert when he first came in the league. He yeah, was he a was, thick he was figure. Yeah. He maybe weighed 200 pounds. Now yeah. he's bigger. Well, we hardly knew you. <laughs> all right. We will see. Episode 21 in seven days. Jeff, thanks for this great show. Good show. Behind the scenes, Mike, Ashley, everybody, Josh, thank you. Uh, until next week, Utah by five. Trust me. <laughs>